Welcome to Word Time. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ, and uh, we're here to bring you Marriage Part 2. And the word that we bring you today, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will apply to your life. Uh, it's not intended to attack either party, the husband or the wife, but to bring them both into submission to the Word of God. And if you listened to the last one, if you didn't, you need to go back and listen to that. But we want to talk about our role, not our opinion, according to the Word of God. Uh, and today in America, we have over 70% uh, marriages wind up in divorce, and I would be interested to, to see the statistic about how many times they're multiply married and remarried and divorced yeah. and all that. I never even thought about that, but we know that's the case. It's the same case in the church as it is in the world, which means there's something wrong. The church, the body of Christ, uh, should be reflecting their relationship with Christ. And sadly, I say this, I do believe that's taking place. I really do. When you've got um, a person that you're married to that's not willing to hunker down in the Word of God, no matter what the problem or what the issue is, or not willing to get upon their knees, then they're clearly not submitted to the ways of God. And so we hope to talk about that. And I know that we got a lot of women listening. We got a lot of, I don't know how many guys are listening, but it seems like there seems to be more women than men. And I just perceive that. I don't know that for a fact. But don't feel like anybody's picking on you. Don't feel like that's the case. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. We desire you to be everything that God called you to be. We desire for you to demonstrate his glory and his holiness. And men, we desire that you feel the role of God and, and love your wife as Christ loves the church and that you stand up and that you take charge and that you understand that you have a role, that you have a place that, that God has put you in that no one else can be put there. That he's put you there to lead. He's put you there to, to call your family together to their knees. He's put you there to speak a blessing over your wife and over your children. He's put you there for a reason and a purpose. And there's nothing worse than not fulfilling that role. And, and you know, so many people listening is they'll go into their workplaces and their jobs and they'll take that authority role and they'll um, do a tremendous job. I know because just talk about coaches and they're going in and coach their backside off and, and they'll get after those kids and they're truly good coaches, but they don't take their family serious. When they come home, they think they're entitled to sit down on the couch, have a cold beer, and just do whatever they want to do, watch football. They, they think they're entitled to something. The most important thing that you will ever do, your number one ministry is to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two is to your spouse and to your children. Spouse first, then your children. If your children become more important than your spouse, you're headed for disaster. Doesn't mean you don't love them, but it's a different kind of love than it is. You're, you're not one with your children. You're one with your spouse. You need to understand that. And the only way that you can truly be one with them is to be in total agreement with the Word of God. And if you're not one and you remain two under the same roof, it's just a matter of time before you're going to go your separate ways. And now we're back to where we started. Yeah, the, now we have divorce. Yeah, the Bible's riddled with passages about um, how the spirit and the flesh cannot coexist. It cannot happen. Uh, it doesn't matter what we try, what... And, you know, we, we talk about people who go into their job. Coaches, for instance, our profession... But teachers, any other job you have, and they will work their butt off, and they're known as a good man or a good woman in that job, but that's all worldly. They don't put their priorities in, in place, and part of this coronavirus and what's happened is you have, we've had a chance to reconfigure our life in a way, and a lot of people aren't. You see, on, I see on Facebook all the time people missing this, missing that. I tell you what, maybe it's because I'm introverted a little bit, but I don't miss anything. Right. This has been great. I've gotten closer to God. I've gotten closer to my kids. Uh, there's nothing about this that, that is a bad thing. This is actually, we're going back, you know, we did a podcast a while back about going back to the Church of Acts. Well, they didn't have any other options besides just praising God. And, um, you know, you talk about, I, I know for a fact, a 70% divorce rate, and I know because I took divorce care classes, and if you're not familiar with that and you've been divorced, they're pretty good. I would recommend them. They are biblically based and uh, at churches and things like that. But one of the percentages I remember, second divorce, it went up. 75 percent third divorce it, it goes up the number goes up so those people some of those are repeat offenders mm -hmm. and that shows you that we seek we continually try to seek and we're told and taught you can fix this by doing this and you have it for every aspect of life um any disease or uh, not disease any uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for uh, addiction mm -hmm. uh, alcohol addiction drug addiction you know um, marriage addiction in a sense okay and we look for the world to fix our problems, and uh, our problems can only be found in this book right here. Right. And if right. we stick with that, and, and here's the thing, and I, I just want to repeat this because this whole process, this is going to take weeks and multiple podcasts to get through. And for those people, if you're listening and you're offended by anything, I just got to say this, be offended with God because it's not with us. We're reading straight from this book. 
that God gave us. And I'm going to say a couple things about this because it's just been on my heart. Okay, number one, we know there's a 70% divorce rate. Let's go out on a limb and say 70% of us then are doing this the wrong way. Okay, number one, it obviously failed for a reason. Number two, the other, and we're down to what, what are we, we're down to 3% maybe you're good. I don't know, 2%, somewhere in there. Yeah. So we're talking about, let's just say 25% that are not good, but aren't divorced. Well, just because you're married and have stayed married doesn't mean you're doing it God's way. Right. Okay, that could mean you just have one of the one of both of y'all, you're okay with cheating, you're okay with doing this, or you're just, uh, you know enough to know that, you know, if we have much more of a commitment than that. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean, so don't, you know, and I'm not saying I'm high and mighty or anything, but if you're out there and you're one of those who hasn't been divorced and you're with that spouse, don't just ignore this message, look into it, evaluate it, and see if you're where you're supposed to be as well. Because just because you're together, I mean, I was together with my wife for seven years. Mm -hmm. And it was seven, I would say, good years. I, you know, I look back now and there's a lot more problems, but seven good years. So you don't sit there and think about, you know, until the bomb drops, what, what really happened. Right. And, you know, we can sit here, and I know there's been a lot of this that I've heard. We read this text, and this stuff is 2,000-year-old year old, year old text, nearly. 2000, some, some more than that. But, like, in, in uh, we're in first century church. And we're talking about God's design for the family, for marriage. You talked about earlier about the workplace. You have a hierarchy. You have a boss. Being a subordinate to a boss. For instance, we're coaches. We have an athletic director. We have principal superintendent. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're inferior to them as a human, inferior to them in any way. As opposed, You could be smarter than them. The bottom line is they have a position that has been given to them that they've earned Right, right, wrong, or otherwise, and they're in a position above you. And the only way your profession succeeds is by abiding with that. This is no different than what God's design for the family was not, in our sense, coaches to athletic director. We're not in charge of our athletic director. That's not the design of that hierarchy. And this is God's design for this. And I want to say, because I've been talking about Romans 12 too a lot, and before we get into it, I really want to repeat that again, because... While this stuff is 2,000 years old, it hasn't changed. God has not changed. We and our society has changed, and we have shifted. And you can go all the way back to Genesis 3. You can go all the way back. God <clears throat> set this hierarchy the way it was. If you have a problem with that, take it up with him. Right. And that's probably why most of us keep failing at marriage. Uh, and number two, it was designed that way because that's the way he had it perfect when everything was before sin. That's what, That was going to be the harmonious concept of a family. And you see those every once in a while out there. We see that concept and it works out. Okay, But most of our society doesn't do it that way. And like I said, you could be married and stay married, but you have maybe a lot more compromise than you should. Right. And it's not maybe, you do. There's right. compromise there because you're not living according to God's way. And you might not get divorced ever, but you're sure not doing it God's way. the blessing of God on that home right. for disobedience. And, Something that's got to be understood here, John, as you're talking, is that, you know, in the Garden of Eden, um, Satan knew what he was doing. Yeah. He approached Eve. Now, this mm -hmm. is biblical when they were in a perfect state. Eve was the weaker vessel. The Bible says that. Um, and, and now I see that clearly. Mm -hmm. that that's the reason he approached. Now, she was deceived, but Adam disobeyed on purpose. Absolutely. So this is, this is very well, important to understand that the role of, of you husbands that are listening right now, your role is to wash your wife in the Word of God. Your role is to stand and stand there for. Your role next to Jesus is that you're the source that your family comes to for strength. And again, we're, we're talking to a godly man. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if we say 70% and yet another 20% is not getting it done. So we're sitting there saying that 90% of the families have nowhere to go. Spouses have nowhere to go. The wife has nowhere to go, so she's placed in a position yeah. when God said that the, the curse, one of the curses that came upon the women was that your desire will be for your husband and the desire to please a man, but the man that she's trying to please mm -hmm. doesn't love God. Right. He's not serving God. He's not speaking into her life. He's not speaking blessing over his children. He's not doing his job. And so when, when the serpent approached Eve, Adam was in his perfect state, and he sat there and watched this take place. And then he partook and did what his wife said. When he should have stepped up 
And the man came, the, 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 the evil spirit, the demon from hell, Satan himself, walked up to Eve. He should have said, get out in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. And we need some men right now that will go up to a TV set and say, get out in Jesus' name. That will turn the radio station and say, get out in Jesus' name. I said, get out in Jesus' name. I would have fired up now. All right. Let's so go. On that, though, I do want to add. <laughs> Praise God. You know, we can go back and break this down in Genesis because this is God's proper design for a marriage. Yes. Everything should have been. Yes. It is very odd. Satan did not deceive Adam. Okay, and I'm not saying the woman is, is anything That's like scary. that, but he didn't deceive Adam. And if you remember, I don't know if it's in Genesis 2, it's obviously in 1 or 2. 3, I believe. Uh, well, I'm talking about before that. When okay. God said, don't eat the fruit, he didn't tell right. Eve. He told right. Adam before Eve was. Right. So Adam knew. He was told. So Adam, by, I would say, cowering to whatever Eve wanted. And Eve, you know, I, we weren't there. We don't know the dialogue, but Eve was deceived. It was easier for her to be deceived than the man. That's biblical okay and we're not you know we can get i'm not saying you're, mm -hmm. that you're not more spiritual than your husband or anything like that but there's a reason the serpent uh deceived eve he attacked eve he didn't go to adam okay because and he, this is what satan does in our families is he attacks in a certain way and i'm not you know we're not placing blame because a man can make mistakes just as easily easier but when you when you break down why marriages fail it more often than not, I'm going to give you two examples, okay? We talk about a woman a woman wants a divorce, a man wants a divorce. More often than not, when a man is the cause for a divorce, it's because he cheated, right? In one way or another. In yeah. one way or another, okay? He's, he's looking elsewhere for something, okay, that he's not receiving, mm -hmm. all right? And we talk about 1 Corinthians 7, there's something you're supposed to be receiving on a regular basis as, as a, in accordance to each other. And that's part of being one with God and knowing that. And then two, the other one, a woman in a lot of ways is ready to leave because she's lacking attention. She's lacking help in the home. She's lacking leadership of some sort. So she finds it elsewhere. Right. So she finds it elsewhere. My yeah. point behind this is both of them can be drawn back to deceiving the woman. But I don't mean it in just the sense it's her fault because the man is not doing his part. Yeah. Okay. But it, it, you really think about it, and I know there's plenty of men out there that are trash, and I know that. But more often than not, when they cheat, it's not because, and I know I could be wrong about this, but that's not because they're just going out for a reason. Now, there's plenty of trash out there, and there's both sides that are bad. I know that. But my point yeah. is, my point well, with I'm this. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm shaking my head because I've got it all together. Right. But yeah. my point yeah. with this is, go back to Genesis 3. There's plenty of men. I'm not trying to blame a divorce on one gender. That's not what I mean, I'm we doing. We couldn't possibly know. No, that that's not what I'm doing. What I'm yeah. doing is, is it's, it's, Eve was attacked. Okay, so we can go back biblically to there. And then when she went, and I don't know the dialogue, when she went to her husband, hey, have this fruit. Mm -hmm. Did she lie about the fruit? Did she say it was from the tree of good and evil? Did he know yeah. it was from good and evil? All that stuff. He knew not to do it. Number one, she didn't go and talk to her husband and say, what do you think about this? She just acted on it when she was deceived. Yeah. That's part of the breakdown here. The other part is Adam, instead of saying no, because I just wonder what would have happened if Eve was deceived and she ate the fruit. And then Adam says, I'm not doing that. Because yeah. I had a decree from God. Now, in a way, Eve... You would have been divorced. Right. <laughs> and in a way, Eve deceived... Yeah. Eve didn't, um, I'll put it yeah. this way. Eve disobeyed her husband yeah. because Adam was the one who told her not to do yeah. it. God, or Adam, disobeyed God. Yeah. So, and you talk about, and we talk, I think it's in Romans 5, where Paul is very clear, this is Adam's mistake, the sin of Adam. Yeah. Uh, and that's why the woman carried the seed that led to Jesus, and a, and a man wasn't able to. Yeah. Because of Adam's sin. Adam, so you could argue Adam's sin more egregious, yeah. even though it started with what Eve did. And, but it's a twofold thing where it falls apart because she try, basically tried to go above him, and he went below her. Yeah. He knew better, and he didn't do it. So you have two parts. It's not blaming one gender or the other. Right. They had a part. Adam, could he have stopped his sin right then? Yes. He could have stopped her sin. I, I, I firmly believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the woman um, was to be the help mate of the man. Somewhere, direction failed. Yeah. Leadership failed, even when man was in his perfect state. Right. And you know what he should have done is is I, you can't convince me that he didn't know there was something going on. You can't convince me that whatever men are listening, you don't know what your, what your right. woman is reading. 
um, you know, these women that are reading yeah. these romance novels and they're having imaginations. Yeah. It's just that they're already committing adultery in their mind because you haven't done your job in the home. And I'll go another you way know? with that because, like in my stance, my ex-wife was mad about certain issues that I wasn't recognizing that I should have. And whether she did what, and acted on it a certain way, there were certain aspects that I could have done better as a husband that I didn't realize until now. So right. in that same aspect, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, are they reading a novel that's making them stray? Mm -hmm. It could just be, are you helping where you're supposed to? Are you doing your part? And part of that, obviously, is the hierarchy from God that leadership as a Christian, and that was, I'll, I'll admit, that was my fault. I did not spiritually lead my family as I should. And thank God he gave me a reprieve to do it right. Mm -hmm. Now that my kid, my kids are seven and three years old, thank God I had the time to build them up as opposed to, you know, the thing that terrified me, and I'll tell you this, when I was going through my divorce, I was like, I remember, man, if my kids were older, this would be a lot easier, but I never thought about it until a little bit later. They're so young. I would, I could have lost them and they would have never known God and they would have had to figure it out on their own right. later on because I was leading them to hell by my inaction. And the fact that my daughter was two years old when it started, she will know nothing but church. Right. My son at six years old when this started, he will know nothing but church. He's a little bit later, but they know nothing but church now. That's the grace of God right there. He took what I gave him and made it awesome. Yeah. You know, so, good out of your I mess. mean, he did. yeah, he did. That's important, I mean, to understand. And so as we move on in this, I want to bring out a point now. We beat on men a little bit because there truly are lack, there's just a lack of leadership in the home. Yeah. And the wives have just gotten used to this. You know, they, they've just gotten used to it and they think that's just their job to sit back and let him just be a sluggard and drink his cold beer and watch TV and all that. At the same time, the men are not governing their homes. Men, how many times have you spiritually cleaned your house? How many times you went around and, and willing to deal with the issues that need to be addressed, whether it be their romance novel, whether it be the Desperate Housewives show or whatever it is, that's causing imaginations to come in the mind of your spouse yeah. before it gets too late. And another thing is that even if your spouse chooses to go astray, you don't go to hell with them. If they choose to go astray, you stand because Jesus is your first love. He's the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We are the bride of Christ. And even if your wife goes astray, you don't go astray just to stay with her. If she choose, and if that's the other way around as well. Yep. If they choose to go astray, if Adam, if she wasn't going to listen to Adam, she was not going to listen to direction. And she chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He still should not have eaten from God. Right. He should not have obeyed the voice of his wife. And you know, they're, they're, now we're going to get into, first of all, you've got to get into 2 Timothy, or 1 Timothy chapter 2. But I want to bring this up in Judges chapter 4. I want to bring up Deborah, the judge of Israel. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the authority of the man and the woman. And, you know, Jabin was the king of Canaan. Uh, and his military leader was, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try to do that. But Deborah, the prophetess of Israel, calls on Barak to, that God had told her, said that you're going to defeat the, the yeah. king of, of Canaan. And he comes in, and uh, the word came from Deborah, the word of the Lord, because the woman is used, the woman can hear from God, and she can speak God's word. They're just talking about the authority and knowing our role and our place in the body of Christ and in the family and the home and the marriage. And so when she calls the Barak up, she says that God has given, given you victory or given Israel victory, let's go to war. He says, I will go only if you go with me. Yeah. Now, Deborah... A woman of God, hearing from God, judging Israel for all these years, tells him, says, if I go with you, then the credit, the victory uh, credit will be given to a woman. I'll get the credit. So what she was basically saying is, I'm not called to be the leader of this. I'm called to give you a word yeah. to let you know God is speaking. I'm praying for you. I'm there. This is what the word of God says. And, and I want to give you a blessing and send you. I want to pray for you. You know, if it's your husband, you know, listen, and I've said this before. There is nothing more powerful than a praying wife. There's nothing more powerful than a woman who will walk up. A man's got a soft spot. It's right here in his rib where it was taken that only she can feel. And when she steps in, that's a tender spot. If you don't believe that, go punch somebody in the ribs. Go take a little, a little fork and jab them. It's a tender spot right there of the flesh, at the side of the body. And that woman carries a big, big role right there. When she comes in and encourages her husband, or discourages her husband. Yeah. He walks wounded and he's more likely to go astray. Now, that doesn't dismiss him from the charges of God of sin. That doesn't allow him to go do what he wants to do. No. But it, matter of fact, it proves his character and how much he loves God. 
But at the same time, in the perfect order, she is to, to be a helpmate. She is to encourage and to be there because her true relationship with Christ, she's demonstrating to her husband yeah. because and she truly has a relationship you know, with Christ. And the thing with me is like the Bible's riddled with these facts. There's a reason why the Bible talks more about what a woman is supposed to do as a wife mm -hmm. uh, than, mm -hmm. than for a husband. And I honestly believe the woman, had, it, it's, a, it's more important of a role because we're, as men, we talk about testosterone and all that stuff all the time. But we are going, if we're a Christian man, because this all starts with two Christians doing it the right way, God's way. That's the number one thing, and that's why most of this stuff doesn't work, okay? But we gave you the, if you hadn't listened to the first one, you need to go back to, what, First Peter 3? Mm -hmm. And because it tells you, it gives you examples of how to do it if, if you're unyoked, okay? But, so for all the stuff that we're, it seems like we're hammering women, number one, Coach Shelby and I are not hammering women. Or men, we're, we're, guys today. we're reading straight. <laughs> yeah, we're reading yeah. straight from the Word of God. If yeah. you have, again, if you have a problem with that, take it up with Him because that's where your issue is. It's not here. Right. Number one. Number two, the woman I believe has a much more important role in a way because she's the one that is more capable. And this is why God placed it this way. I believe. I'm not. This is opinion, by the way, because she's more adjustable. A woman of God is more adjustable. To what her man is, she's more capable of giving him grace when he makes mistakes, mm -hmm. much better than we are, and she she can make whatever leadership style he has work yeah. if she understands her role and commits to her role. Now that doesn't mean you chase sin. That doesn't mean you go along with anything stupid. That, that's not what I'm saying here. But she can adjust. She's and I'm going to argue she's much more adjustable. A woman of God is not any woman. Just like any man. But men, it starts with the men. Yeah. And, and we sit here and say, well, my, my wife's not like that. Well, then you shouldn't have married her. My husband's not like that. You shouldn't have married her. That's the first thing. That's where we make the mistake. We have plenty of passages in this book that explain and teach us how to handle those situations once we've discovered we've made a mistake made. Yeah, we, because we, it doesn't we necessarily... Followed it before right. We made and it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean you make a mistake when you marry that person... Because that could end up being a right. great marriage, right. you know, but you have to be committed to it, both work. people. Right. God can't God, work. And that, but it's not going to be every one of them. No, it's not. It's not. It's, uh, you know, because it, it, God never intervenes with something he gives us, and it's called free will. Mm -hmm. We have a free will. But nevertheless, rather than living in sin, and I hate to say this, but it's, it's just the truth. Rather than living in sin and taking my kids and my grandkids to hell, I'd rather that woman hit the road if she's going to hit the yeah. sin. I'm not going to follow her. And I'm just, not going to follow. And I'm going to give you an example. We, we've talked about this because I had an opportunity um, in during my separation. And I'm sorry to say that because I'm not condoning divorce for anybody. No, else, but sometimes it happens. Yeah, it does. Well, it's, it's happened to me. I, I, here's an example. I had an, I had an opportunity uh, about a month and a half into my separation to go back to the heathen that I was. Mm -hmm. and that that was the excuse at the time for her. But if I went back to how I was, because she would have never married who I'm becoming, all that stuff. And that just, I mean, that just tells you how broken the system is, but you have an opportunity to do that. Well, I knew, and I, I've talked to Coach Shelby about this, I had a five-minute lapse where I'm like, I get my family back, but I would be right back here again. It's, it's the same situation. Exactly. It's be no the same situation. Compromise and, is the friend of the devil, right. period. And I'll, I want to read this because I was trying to do earlier. Right. But Romans 12, 2, and if you if you don't know this one, uh, that's okay, but it's, it's very popular. It's, it's what it is. I'm going to read the NLT version just to make those show me mad. All right, good. But, uh, it, boy, be, be not conformed to, this to the custom of the world. I'm going to read it this way. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Right. The problem with this is God's will was perfect in the beginning. We're the ones, and what did Satan attack in the garden? What, the what was the first, the it attacked, the, the battle for the mind. It so, yeah, and it yeah. attacked what, what concept, marriage. It attacked right. the concept of what God created. That in, in any time, think about our society in general. You have, if you have kids that are in trouble, you have um, marriages in trouble, it all starts with that marriage. Right. Kids don't have dads around, kids don't have moms around, the marriage is crumbling, so they just continue. We continue this wheel right. of filth that has two thousand years. It's been going on, right. and before that, there's plenty of examples in the Old Testament right. too. My point is, God's will was perfect. We have changed it to this perverted sense of 
the woman, I, the, the thing I used to hear all the time, happy wife, happy life. What kind of the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life? So she's happy. You talk about compromise. And I'm not saying that you don't make your wife happy, but she can't be happy because of you. Because you're going to fail her because you're a human being. And back and forth. Yeah. If she puts all yeah. her faith and trust in you, and you put all your faith and trust in her, Thank it's going to end and you're going to be miserable. Don't worry. Bottom line. And we have to yeah. submit to God first. That's why God's at the yeah. top of the umbrella. Man, husband, wife, yeah. kids. Because there's plenty of examples in here. The kid, people that have, you know, I'm not knocking, I, I am knocking select baseball leagues and all that stuff. If you put your kids above everything else, I, James Shaw will not go to 8 million Little League baseball games before he's 10 years old. We're not doing that. Right. Okay? And there's so much with that. I understand baseball and having fun and playing sports and teaches character. But there's an extent that we're going overboard to the point that the kids well, why, why are is running it, Why is it not as important to sit down with your kids and get in the Word of God? Absolutely. Why is it not? I remember when Derek was in high school and he was wanting to go and play college football. And I remember the kids were spending, the parents were spending thousands of dollars. And they were going every Saturday and Sunday. And they were out at camps. They were at OU. They were at all these places, Florida, whatever, going. And I remember telling Derek, I said, we will never do that. I said, because by doing that, we're putting our trust and faith in what we can do. We're draining our resources to make something happen that God, we don't even know what God's will in this matter is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do things right, right here at home. We're going to put, make the word of God, our foundation, our faith, and through the word of God, that be you transform from a caterpillar to a butterfly, metamorphosis, a literal change that you will, will be dependent upon the word of God. And if God's desire is for you to play college football, ain't nobody can stop it. Right. But we're not chasing the American dream. We're not, we're chasing Jesus we're Christ's praying. eyes upon the, the altar and finisher of our faith. And the people listening need to listen to this. And I'm not telling you not to get your kids involved stuff, yeah. but quit taking every moment of every day and, and getting them involved. Oh, you're so good at the karate class or all this stuff, whatever. And then they grow up and they're headed to hell. Oh, I just did a good job. I raised my... No, you didn't. No, you didn't, Dad. Because you, you, you wasn't a leader. You were more interested in watching TV and doing your thing and saying, that's my boy because he hit a home run or because he kicked a soccer goal or because he scored a touchdown. No, you didn't. You should have grabbed your son and said, son, sit right there by me on the couch. I want to show you something. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And you should have started teaching him the ways of God. And you know what? Here's the cool thing. If he's still breathing, it ain't too late to get it right Thank now. You. But you got to get it right. If you had 50 babies out in the ocean, and you want have one life jacket. I ask people this all the time. I say, which one are you going to give it to? You're out there with them. And they say, oh, well, I just the closest one. I said, why don't you put it on so you can save somebody else? Because the baby don't know what to do with it anyway. So get yourself saved and get yourself right in the Word of God. And make up your mind you're going to obey the Word of God no matter what. Well, I might lose my family. You might. But you've done lost them if you do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing that we don't understand. We're so dumb or educated idiots that we look at this thing and say, well, I might lose my family. You've done lost them. If the word of God drives somebody out, they're not saved. You've got to get this down inside of you. Yeah. We, we've got to get a hold of some things here. So, anyway, we've got to go. I, got, I know, but i got to, like, just before I forget, you, you said karate with a Hispanic accent. Yeah. Karate. karate. Yeah, that's... Okay. Giddy up. So, but, yeah, I agree. We, and the, the problem is, is God's will is here. We've transformed it to this low idiotic thing and he's asking yeah. us to yeah he's asking us that's to, what it is he's not, not asking self. us he's saying transform it we're transforming it back to his will what it should have been yeah, we're right. the ones who perverted it and changed it for two thousand years and you have this point where men are afraid to maybe raise their voice a little bit okay oh, yeah. i'm not i know that you know we're, we've been Thanks, divorced so that's why but uh you can't raise your voice if you're a man. If you're a woman, you're supposed to roll over your husband. I mean, and here's the thing. You go, go to Genesis 3. It says that's what's going to happen. God ensured it was going to happen. So if you don't believe in God, look at uh, Genesis Is it Genesis 3.16. Somewhere in there. If you don't believe in God, read that and then yeah. tell me that our society isn't exactly what he said it was going to happen. Yeah. And it's not just it's not just the wife has that. The man was to be, a, was kind of cursed to be subordinate too. In the same concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what he did. So if you, it, we, you can trace it all the way back to the very first marriage ever. They shifted what God had designed for the proper roles of a man and a wife. Yeah. And it has stayed that way. And it's gotten, I would argue, worse because we talk about back, you know, 4,000 years when the time of Jesus, back then women, and, and we talk about it, and we'll get to it at some point, I know, but women were not, some were viewed as property. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it, so even back then, 
You know, it was it was it was not near what it is now. Well, you're gonna there's gonna be there's gonna be a high price to pay. Um, say this as y'all are turning to First Timothy chapter two verse eight. We'll start there. We got to get going on this. Yeah. But, uh, there's gonna be a high price to pay for you men that went out there and married these women and refused to raise them. And, and I'm, that's the wrong word, raise them up, but take a leadership role in their life. God created you for such. Adam was created first and then the woman. Adam was created in the image of God. The woman was created in the image of man. Does not make her less of a daughter of God than, than you are the son of God. It, but that's what the Bible says. It's what the scripture says. And there's going to be a very high price for a man who refuses to step in the role to be the man of the house. And I'm not talking about in an abusive way. No. I'm talking about, you know, this, the side that we don't like to talk about is what about the love? What about the compassion? What about the the uh, understanding for the weaker vessel? Yeah. What about this? I mean, you know, that's the reason, you know, that man was, was created in the image of God is to be a leader in the home. And it does not mean that the wife follows his butt. She stands by his side. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got to still get that down. You know, we got people want, we got religions that tell their wives to walk behind them and cover up and I can treat you like a dog. That's not what we're talking about here. I can tell you right now, and I've said it all a million times, and I'm fixing to read verse 8, the woman's role is just as important as the man's role. It's just not the same role. It's just as important. And you put that together, teamwork I, makes the dream yeah, work. And I still, yeah, argue, I you, I still argue it's you know? more important because it's on her to follow. And that, as a human, that's hard to do. It is. So verse 8, let's get on with this. Yeah. I'm going to read without glasses. Y'all impressed? Praise God. All right. Uh, I desire, therefore, that men... Pray everywhere. Where, men? We're, we're picking on you right now. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. My goodness, how can we get anywhere and raise our hands and praise God as a man of God when we won't even go in our home and lead our family in the right. things of God the Word? If you won't raise your hands in front of your children, don't expect your children to raise their hands and worship God either. Because I'm going to tell you, I remember when I first repented 20 years ago, one of the hardest things to do is to lift our hands because it's a type of surrender to God. Yeah. I'm under arrest. You know, when the law shows up to get your hands up where I can see them, praise God. We raise our hands in a type of surrender to God. Mm -hmm. And when your children and your spouse see you doing that, that breaks a place down in the soul of their heart that you could never get to otherwise, men. They, you know, they need to see you. They need to see you as that you're a real breathing human being who loves God, even, even your flaws that you can talk about and say, now this wasn't right. Here's what the word of God says about this. They need to see that you're real and that you're transparent. And we don't have that. And so verse nine says, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel um, with propriety and moderation. You might be looking for those glasses in a minute. Mm -hmm. Not with uh, braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing. Now, it's not saying that you can't do those things. It's saying don't put your faith and trust in those things. It's saying that you don't cover yourself up. For the beauty of a woman or a man is the hidden person of the heart. That's what it's saying. And as we said last week, it's not saying that you can't wear a little bit of makeup and you can't put your earrings on and that you can't put your, your clothes on, your modest apparel to cover up and all that. Don't say that you can't take a bath. You can't. We prefer that you do. Okay? Because unless our, our smeller's gone away, I mean, we prefer that you do those things. But it's saying don't. We have those people who doctor themselves up and they take two hours to get ready to go out and get a loaf of bread. And the only reason they're doing that is because they want somebody to look at them and say, boy, she look good. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you what looks good. Let me tell you what looks good. A woman who loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what looks good. A, a man that will lift his hands, holy hands, and he'll praise God at Walmart. And he don't care if he's in the parking lot. I don't care if he's in Walmart. He don't care if he's at his school, his place of work. He don't care if he's in the home, at church. He steps up front. He leads his family and says, as for me and my house, we will praise God. Where you at, men? I see the women doing all the, the requesting. I see the women doing all of the praying. I see the women doing all of the lifting holy hands. Thank God for you women. Mm -hmm. But where are the men at? And, and you know what? I, I, I don't want to elaborate on that because I'm fixing to get off on a deal. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. Now, when we talk about submission, and we're fixing to get to the word usurp authority, we're not saying that the woman cannot speak, neither is God. But because if we were saying that, then we have to do away with what God said in Joel chapter 2 that says that your sons and daughters will prophesy. We'd have to do away with Acts, as my friend here told me, that, you know, the, was it Philip that had four virgin daughters that prophesied? Well, how did they prophesy if they weren't allowed to speak? Oh, come on. There's no, we've got to understand, but there's an order to things. Yeah, and we can't get all, all, you know, off on that because there's so many people that think you're attacking women. There is no other religion or concept in world history that supported women. We're talking 2,000 years ago when some were property. 
Yeah. And Mary Magdalene walked with them. Yeah. You know, and there's in read the book of Acts, there's plenty of women that did things. And it, so it's not a it's not a restrictive deal. And like I said, it's no different. You have to look at it. It's the opposite, John. Well, stop. stop it's it's freedom. freedom. Yeah. When you start stepping into the call of God on your life, there is a spiritual freedom and a blessing of God on your life. Ladies, when you start, and again, I know, where's this man at? He's Elijah. He's in a cave, I promise you. <laughs> I know. I already talked about that. He's in a cave. You're just going to have to ask God which cave to look in. Okay? <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, when a woman understands this, that is a type of submission to Christ. It's not about the, the carnal man that's her husband. It is submission to Christ. Christ says, this is what I'm doing. This is my role in the body of Christ in my home. And when she submits to that, instead of trying to redefine what that means and this women's live and all this stuff, when she does that, then the blessing of God comes upon her. Listen, your prayers become wealthy. Yeah. Your children get saved. Your mom and daddy get healed. Come on now. Well, I, Things start happening. Co-workers yeah. start coming around. Things start changing. The kingdom of God starts moving on your behalf. Your prayers don't just hit the ceiling and bounce down anymore because now you're an obedient servant of the Most High God. You are the daughter of God. It changes everything. And that's the thing. Yeah. Once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. once you are truly saved and have repented, this stuff won't seem it's absurd. Kind of it's his word. And that's the thing I want it's to say. It's his best. In, in verse 11, women, and I'm reading out of the NLT again, women should learn quietly and submissively. Forget what does that mean? What are we allowed to do with it? Forget all that. This is what this says. The Bible is very clear that this is the inspired word of God. If you are offended by that, by the word submissively, quietly, any, if you're offended by it, okay, it's, it's, it just... Yeah. I, it's John. It's, it, it's real simple. A gentle and a quiet spirit is pleasing unto the Lord. And these days, we're talking about, especially in the church of Corinth, we were talking about the women on one side and men on the other yeah. side. The women were calling across the church. Hey, hey, what was he talking about? We're saying there must be order. If it would have been the men doing the same thing, then I believe the Holy Spirit would have said, let your men learn some order here. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was the women calling across yeah. just at, at this time. Now, we've got some belligerent men that, that the Holy Spirit would say the same thing but to. Why, but why were they... Like, and don't look at this like the women back then. Is this Ephesus or Corinth? I don't remember. Yeah, Ephesus. Well, Ephesus. Let's not look at it like they were um, out of order. I mean, they were out of order. I'm not trying to make it that way. But my point is, at this time in history, women were not allowed to be in a church. This was a new concept to, to learn to be an equal in a sense. The new covenant. So yeah. stop looking at this like a detrimental thing and look at it as Paul is making um, rules in place. Because yeah. how many women back then, and I don't know for sure, but how many women were allowed to learn in the church like this? Yeah. Uh, from what I've studied, what I've read, the boys were the ones who went to Bible school. I don't remember what it's called. There's a word for right. it. But they went to Bible school and the women did it. Right. So look at this past the concept. Think about the times here. And yet, 2,000 years ago, they, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, women didn't know how to act in church. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it, I mean it like they just there, never had been to church. There's, there's a, I'm going to say this, too, and add on what you're saying. There's preachers who get in the pulpit after about 10 minutes, and they just shut up and sit down. Because all they're doing is mumbo-jumbo garbage, you know, prayer requests, waste 30 minutes for prayer requests. Not yeah. that it's not important, but they're doing that because they don't really have a message, because they don't have a word from God right. to speak. So they're trying to fill in time so they can still pick up their paycheck and do nothing. It's a shame. It's an abomination to God. I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt. We need men of God that will stand up, that will preach the gospel of truth with a desire to see the lost saved. And let me tell you how you can tell if he's a man of God. No matter what his voice sounds like, no matter how hard it seems, if his desire is for you to repent, get over yourself. He's doing God's work. If his desire, if you're convinced that his desire is to see you repent, get over yourself. Yeah. That's it. I don't care if you like him or not. If he's preaching the truth and he's preaching repentance, the blood of the cross, there's a reason, get over yourself. There's a reason you're convicted yeah. when someone yeah. says something. It's no different than getting caught. I make a mistake on the, right. yeah. When I make a mistake on the football field, no one likes to get blamed for their mistakes. But if you're a Christian, a true Christian, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, being a cute coach Shelby calls me out for sin that I commit or things like that, it doesn't make me so angry that I can't handle it. Thank you, brother, for helping me with that. That's the concept of that. Right. And we have so many, you yeah. can tell, just walking around unsaved that get offended for every little thing. Hey, I get offended by stuff still. I'm not saying we're perfect or anything, but I know the difference between when I wasn't saved and when I was. And now... 
I can be attacked from a brother's standpoint and know, yeah, I need, I need to fix that. Amen. So we're on verse 12 and it says, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Now you usurp authority. I need to write that. I wrote down some things about usurp this morning. It means to dominate. It means to act on your own authority like Eve did in the garden. She acted on her own authority. Now we talked about Adam's role in stepping in. And he should never have followed his wife in the sin, nor should you ever follow your husband, or vice versa. It should never happen. Um, it's, it's to take, and let me uh, put on my glasses. I don't need them, but I'm going to put them on anyway. A position of power of, uh, or importance, illegally or by force, um, is to take place of someone in position or power, illegally, to surplant, um, which is to take the place of someone. Like a king, if you like making a plan to overtake a king's authority or a supervisor or boss, how many people at your workplaces have behind the scenes yeah. tried to stir up by backbiting and talking and doing, and they may be saying things that are completely right, but let me tell you something. It was the sister of Moses um, that spoke against her brother, that her and, her and Aaron yeah. were speaking against Moses, and Moses had disobeyed God. He married an Ethiopian woman, mm -hmm. and God came basically to the scene, and he said, where is your fear of me? Did I not place Moses as the prophet over Israel? Was that not my decision? In other words, it ain't your job. No man gets into an authority position without God knowing right. about that. God put him there, and you should have feared before me. Yes, he disobeyed me, but that's between me and him, not me, him, and all Israel, or your whole family, or your workplace, or this, or that. Now, if it's some kind of complete misconduct that is causing other people to fall in sin, yes, it needs to be addressed in the appropriate way. But just because you have a disagreement, you need to remember that place of authority and position was put there by God. And if you can't do that, I promise you, you cannot hold your spouse in high, high esteem. You cannot honor God if you cannot do that. And that gets a lot of us. It also says to encroach or infringe upon someone else's rights, hand in hand with a gentle and quiet spirit. A person with a, without a gentle and a quiet spirit cannot do this. They will usurp the authority because they don't have the proper respect and understanding of who Jesus Christ is, who is the one who gives all these commands. For Adam was formed first in verse 13, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, as we've already talked about, fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness. Listen. She will be saved in childbearing. Isn't that amazing? In childbearing. And there's so much there. It's not that mean just, oh, I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> there's more to it. I'm not going to teach on that right now. But I'm going to say this again because perhaps the Holy Spirit will breathe on this in your spirit right now. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue. If. If. Now, you know lots of wicked women give birth. There's some of them out there shooting out 46 babies. You know, just become a burden to the system. It's just what they do because that's it, whatever. I'm not going to go into that either, but I said it. So be it. I pay for it. It comes out of my taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, if they continue, if, if she'll be saved during childbearing, if they continue in faith, love, holiness, self-control, self-control. If you're usurping the authority and trying to step into a place God hasn't put you, whether it be a spouse or whether it be at work, if you're doing that, you have no self-control. That is a spirit, and it's not a spirit of God. And you need to repent of it. You need to acknowledge it. You need to pull down that pride and prideful and arrogant spirit. And you need to surrender to the cross of Calvary. And you need to lay there in the presence of God. And when God has removed that from you and has washed you in his blood, then you need to get up, take authority over the powers of hell, stand up, and go back and do it right this time. That's what you need to do. Everything submitted to God. Everything. I want to read this one going with uh, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in my study Bible, I really like this part. It says, women who fulfill their God-given roles are demonstrating true commitment and obedience to Christ. So when we talk about their saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith, love, holiness, self-control, it's because that's the concept God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. And that's they're not saved because they have babies. That's not what we're saying they're saved because of grace through what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. But it, it, it's the same thing. It's like people who say, because I've heard some preachers say um, faith and works don't go together. And they don't in the concept of what we, our salvation, but works are a direct result of your faith. There Work should be something right. Fear and trembling. There yeah. should be a, a result that people see, a, a change when you become saved. 
And in this sense, if you see a woman and she's she is fulfilling her godly role for her family towards her husband, towards her kids, that's where she'll be saved. And there, you know, there's one other aspect that we talk about the teaching, because um, it says, "I do not let women teach men or have authority over them." We're talking about usurping authority because why would the church? Why would the hierarchy of the church be different from the family? So the, you serve the authority again. You just said that. You got to understand again. She's trying to take over that role. It does not mean she can't speak a word, a right. prophetic word, into her husband's life if he's mm -hmm. a pastor, whatever it is. Uh, did Deborah not do that? Yeah, she did. And I and, wanna, and, and she wasn't. God wasn't angry with her because she went to war. Yeah, she had to do what she had to do. Ladies, some of you have to do what you got to do yeah. because and don't pervert what I'm saying. Try it God's way. But sometimes somebody's got to step up, and that old sluggard that you been sleeping with ain't gonna get it done right. i'm sorry yeah. ain't gonna get it done I'm, I'm sorry you're in that position but that's just the way yeah. it is and some you know most of the time it's your mistake that yeah. got you there you're both married yeah. unsaved one or the other yeah. and we just went through a whole section last week about how you do that right so you don't have an excuse to be divorced in that sense but you, you know you, that's the thing we have so many that get married wrong one and then once they become saved it's like right, before let's go before that they get married, it doesn't work out because they weren't saved, because they didn't do it God's way. Well, I can move on and do this. No, you've got to buckle down and find God. And, and You need to get saved before you can go, go before you, you... Right. Otherwise, the cycle, you're never yeah. going to break the wheel. You're not going to break it. It's okay. going to continue on but and on and on. I wanted yeah. to give a list here because my Bible talks about the different women, the teachers. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about other uh, prophetesses. There were judges. You're talking, you're talking about Deborah. I don't know what year that is. 2000 BC, 4,000 years ago, somewhere in there. And she is in charge, basically, yeah. of Israel. I mean, think about that. So we're sitting here knocking women. Are you serious? Right. You know what I mean? Because I just thank God just, for Deborah. No, you're right. Because because what's his name? Uh, Barak. Yeah. He wasn't. He was uh, apprehensive about it all. No, he didn't want to do nothing without Deborah. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you what. You know that that and the other side of that is even though. What we said is true. I want to get the other side of that too, John, and then you can finish this yeah. out on this deal. It's probably been pretty long, but you know, um, what if she's not there? He's a general. It, it's obvious that he's a warrior. It's obvious he's producing testosterone. Yeah. It's obvious that God has made him a warrior because the message was sent to him to lead the troops into battle for victory. But he needed her. Yeah. He needed her. And some of you get what an example. some of these husbands, some of these women, y'all need each other. You just yeah. not surrender. You're not coming into agreement. You know, the Bible says in the beginning, they were one. God created a male and female. They were one. You got to understand that. But now we become one. And I don't have time to teach on that, but you need to hear what I'm saying. We become one. How do we become one? Two, it takes two to become one. Yep. We come into agreement. I'm not doing you, you perverts out there. I'm not talking about John. Why are you pointing at me? Uh, just because they can see us. But two in agreement are not looking at each other. They're looking at Jesus. And when you do this, it comes together just like this. Mm -hmm. And then your spouse becomes a great help to you. Whether it be the leadership role as the husband or whether it be the support role and the help role. Because you're both looking at Jesus. And when you start looking at Jesus, all of a sudden something happens and things start coming together and it becomes one. That happens. Now, I really prefer, and this is me, I don't have a word to give you exactly on that right now. I prefer that happen before you marry. I prefer that you have a time and a season to where you come together and you become one. Mm -hmm. You spend time, you break bread together. Like we said last week on a regular basis. Because during that process of breaking bread, you might, you're going to find out if one party is not all in or not. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out. Well, oh, I'm going to marry you. And then you find out that y'all are not, one of them's not all in. And all of a sudden now we've got, we're back to our statistics again. Yep. Let's break bread together. And I'm not going to, I used to give a time frame, you know, you say a year, two years, whatever. I don't know the time frame. It might no, be six not. months. It might be, I don't know. So God will breathe on it, and God will speak. God still speaks to his children today. But if you won't do this, I ain't going to say good luck because that's witchcraft. But you don't have the blessing of God. You don't. Can you make it work? Oh, absolutely. Yep. You can make it work, and the Bible, but you'll never have the blessing of God. And you have passages that teach you how to do it. If yeah. you don't know, if you don't know where yeah. to turn, go to 1 Peter 3 like we did last week. That's a, a surefire way to do it. That's what I had to go through. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it doesn't always work out. It takes two to do that. But as if, if you're unyoked and someone's willing to stay with you, there's a lot of hope there because we have First Corinthians seven, 
16, I think. We have passages that say that we can, we can um, not we can, the Holy Spirit will transform those people through and seeing our chaste conduct. Right. And um, I, I wanted to, to, to read just a little bit about the, you know, the women teachers. We, if you're sitting over there like women can't do anything, and Coach Shelby and Coach Shaw hate women, like what, I mean, hang up on this. I mean, we have embellished all no, that. hate women. women. We just, we just no. you know, we're just, reading the Bible. it's like you women we are to, saying, we're the men, and we're saying, we're the God that women have. It's the same yeah. thing. And, and we say that for your benefit, you know, we're not, not like we're out searching, but the bottom line is, is it's God's order. And where are our brothers and sisters at that are obeying the covenant of God? That's the bottom line. That's what we're saying. So Priscilla, who taught Apollos, the great preacher in Acts 18, uh, Phoebe worked in the church, Romans 16, Mary, Trifina, Trifosa, Persis in Romans 16, Eudo, Eu, Euodia, and yeah, Syntyche in Philippians 4. There's plenty of examples of women teaching and being huge parts of the church. And we're talking about the Christian church, the new church, not Old Testament passages. Mm -hmm. But we did give you an example of Deborah. And I mean, Ruth, you, you know, I mean, Ruth, every time I read Ruth, I get fired up. Like, what a woman. You know, just completely selfless. And I, I mean, that's the thing I say because men, we're stupid. So she didn't know anything, did she? She was a Moabite. Yeah. She came from the same family clan as Jezebel. Yeah. Jezebel decided to stay with her ways. Ruth yeah. said, you know what? There's something about Jehovah. Yeah. There's something about Jesus. And it knows you don't think Jesus wasn't born yet. Bless your heart. We'll have to teach you on that later. He but there's up something up. about Jesus. Yeah. You know, and... Man, if I can have Jesus, I don't want all this false junk on wood and poles and yeah. you know regulation. I want Jesus. Yeah. And it's not you too know? late. It's not too late to fix whatever you're in. Yeah. Uh, and and like Coach Shelby said earlier, you might even lose people that Jesus said. I don't remember what Coach Shelby remember. Uh, he's calling people and mother against daughter and brother against father and all that. I, I mean, you will lose. you will lose people. Yeah. Luke 14. And, but it's yeah. better. I mean, I, I'm a living example. I've been divorced. I lost that person that I trusted and, mm -hmm. you know, my confidant. And I, I lost it and I found Jesus instead. And I got blessed. Life is going the, the right way. I got know? blessed. I had a demon from hell trying to take me straight to the bowels of hell. I got the sun set free, set, it was free indeed. So <laughs> I got a new lease on life, got an opportunity, praise God. The Wicked Witch is dead. You know, y'all remember that on Toto and Kansas and all that stuff? Yeah, I'm telling you. And I'm not speaking against the person. I'm speaking against the spirit. spirit. The wicked, the evil spirit. And I don't miss it one bit. I don't miss it one bit. There are times that I grieve about decisions I made, and you will too. But you know what? God is greater than your grief. He is. He loves you. He died on the cross for you before you ever were. He knew every mistake that you were ever going to make. And he said, you know what? You were to die for. So whatever situation you're in, I don't know. Whatever's going on, I don't know. But I do know the word of God. I do know the truth. And yes, God can restore marriages. And yes, God can turn around that which is going the right direction. He can do that. He's more willing to do it than we are to, are willing to ask. We've just got to hunker down and we got to pray. Ladies, God bless you that are listening. You, you have a unique role that God created you for. You are a daughter of the most high God. If you will step into that role and begin to follow Jesus. If not, you become a dog, the spawn of Satan's, which yeah. become a concubine of the devil. You choose this day. You want to be Jezebel or you want to be Ruth? Right. Choose what you want to be. Men, same thing. You can choose to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3.18, or you can choose to be conformed to the image of Satan himself. You, you can walk around as a wolf in sheep's clothing, or you can have the righteous robe of Jesus Christ washed in the blood, and you can become the man of God that he's called you. It's not too late. I didn't have to go to cemetery school to learn something. All I had to do was go to the school of the burning bush. I showed up. I got up in the morning, started praying, and said, God, learn me something. That's how we say it in the woods. And God began to bring this word off the pages by the power of the Holy Spirit and began to show me things I did not know. As a matter of fact, there was a time where I thought that I was going to have to go to seminary school because I thought that's what you did when God said, preach the gospel. And God said, don't go. He said, they'll ruin you. Don't get tied up in the doctrine of man, and nor am I saying you were wrong for doing that. This is my testimony. You can give yours later. Mm -hmm. But he said, don't do that. They'll ruin you. You need nothing that any man should teach you but my Holy Spirit. And so I checked into the school of the Holy Spirit and still check in daily. And you know what? He keeps learning me. He keeps teaching me. And I will be learning for the rest of my life. I am a student, mm -hmm. an obedient student progress. of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's where I'm at. Doing That's what we're praying for you guys. Where's the verse? He's doing a good work until you come. Back. That's Philippians uh, 1 6. Yeah. I will continue to do this work. He who began a good work in you will continue that work until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, until his return. There's your hope. So no matter what valley you think you're in, no matter what you think you've done wrong, no matter the divorce, no matter the separation, no matter, no matter, no matter, the only thing that's unforgivable is rejecting Jesus Christ and blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. That's the only unforgivable sin. So stop doubting God. Stop lying fear to trump in your life. Step into the call of God in your life, whether he restores that or whether he don't. You get your head up. You anoint yourself with oil after you've come to the cross of repentance and begin to walk in the ways of God today. That when they look back, that they won't even smell the stench of smoke from your past life. That they'll look and say, you know what? We thought we knew her. You know what? We thought we knew him. But there's something different about you. You got a little pep in your step. You got a little glow. And you say, what's going on? Well, let me tell you what's going on. I met Jesus and I finally decided to start following him. I spend time with him. He comes before everyone else in my life. That's what happened. You want to know him? And a lot of times I'll say, it's been good knowing you. You won't hear from us anymore. And then sometimes, sometimes, mm -hmm. there'll be that one that says, yes, I want to know him. Tell me about Jesus. You know, like the three or four that are watching this right now. Yeah. yeah. The ones that just pass on over because they got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. They got it all figured out. Amen? Praise God. Close us out, dog. All right. You pray? I'm ready. Dear Heavenly Father, we love and thank you, God, and we just... We ask that you hope that you that you take this word and send it out to those who need it and those who are listening with whole hearts, Lord. And we just in anything that we've said that is not according to your will, let it fall on deaf ears. And Lord, we pray for those families out there. We pray for those husbands and wives. We pray for those that are that are in the midst of a separation or divorce. There is hope throughout yes. that. Yes. But they, they need to understand that you come first and this is a chance for them to reevaluate that. And this coronavirus and everything that's gone on. This gives people a chance to reevaluate what they're supposed to do and where they're supposed to be with you. And then all else will fall into place, Lord. We know personal experience, right or wrong or otherwise, we know following you is the only way. And that all things will line up according to your will. You, you do the best you can do with what we give you. Mm -hmm. And sadly, Thank that's you, not much. But yes. you do the very best that you can because you won't infringe on our free will, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to to bless us and get good and bad, right, wrong, or otherwise, things we lose, things we gain. We know it's all according to your will, and there's a purpose and a reason for it all. And we have the peace that passes all understanding because we know that within you, God. Amen. And Lord, just continue to, to watch over us and guide us and allow us to walk in your light and al align our lives to your will, God. And please go out to all those out there listening, the, the ones who aren't even convicted, just one word, one sentence, one verse we've said that reaches them, those husbands, those wives, just to see what they can be and what, what they can have through you. And Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.